All right, we have an iPhone 10R here, and it has a short on VDD main. Uh, this is not a, this is not that common actually. I don't see a lot of VDD main shorts on these XRs, but maybe that's only because I don't get a lot of them. Uh, maybe others are getting them. I'm not really sure. Anyways, um, easiest way to test for VDD main without taking it out of the housing is to um, measure the backlight anode pin, which is see so there's there are these two middle connectors and I believe it's this one that, that's the anode pin yeah it is the anode so if you're looking at the logic board and you, you just take the screen off then what you would do is just uh, put your multimeter in diode mode red to ground black to the second pin right here and if it reads 0 0.20 then you have a short on VDD main okay so that's that's what I do instead of disassembling things and, and stuff like that that's I always go to the backlight pin and if it's 0.2 then you know that there's a 0.2 drop across the diode which goes to ground which should not be shorted out but if it is shorted out then it's gonna it's gonna show 0.2 if it's normal then it's gonna show right around 0.53 or so 0.53 volts alright so these um XRs and are, are not very fun to work with because uh, it's not very easy to take the shields off them um, if you if you use heat, then you risk you risk um, overheating this <clears throat> transceiver chip right here, which is underfilled and and easily easily uh, overheated, and then you'll get a, no, a searching no service problem. So do not use heat. I I have these pliers right here, which we sell in our store, and they are better than the cheap Hako CHP uh, awful. <laughs> pliers these things are so much more strong um, so what I do is <clears throat> I'll show you what I do but <clears throat> what I do is I just use these nice tweezers and well let's just take a look at where VDD main is first and then just to make sure that we are okay so these are all the VDD main points right here and I've already checked this side and this side with a with free spray but I have not checked the front or the shield yet so I'm gonna take this shield off here and I'll show you guys okay so what I do is I just just need to make sure that I'm not you you want to make sure you don't damage any chips when you're like <clears throat> uh, ripping the shields off forcibly so for this one you can cut you can go this corner or maybe even this corner just be very careful because if you mess up one of the corners then I'll probably go this corner so basically what I'll do is I'll just kinda and you need some nice nice uh, micro cutters for these things <clears throat> and you just kinda like peel it up like this and basically you just use brute strength to take them out without damaging any chips and bending the lodge board and all that good stuff okay and I think it's okay to tear tear the um, where it's like soldered onto the lodge board there the, the top layer of the lodge board because I don't think you're really ripping any traces away and I could be wrong but I don't see any traces there and I think this is probably the best method of doing it because <clears throat> for some reason you have to use tons of heat to remove these shields and then and then with the heat then it causes many other problems and <clears throat> I guess the only good thing is that these things are already dead so if you mess them up <clears throat> sometimes you don't even know if they're messed up and uh, but in this instance the guy wants data so you definitely don't want to mess this one up you know especially if there's a chance of saving it and I think there's a good chance of saving this thing. So he said he charged it overnight and it just like crapped out one day. So just be careful of these glass ones. You, you definitely don't want to crack them. Although you don't want to have to replace anything unless you absolutely have to. So that's essentially how I do it. Just kind of go like this and just just don't mess up any. And I use a good amount of force. I mean, it's not <clears throat> a good amount of force, my friend. Okay. It's probably going to be the last shield. That, that's where the shorter capacitor is. <laughs> it's probably the CPU shield. <clears throat> Shocker, right? Always the last one. I don't really, <clears throat> I don't see any burnt. I don't see anything burnt right now. Doesn't mean it's not there, but 
Uh, let's see. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll just free spray it and then pop it in and see what happens. Let's see, is this ground up here now? So I think what I'll do is probably just. Alright, let's just free spray it, find our points, and then we'll start poking. <coughs> okay, so. So you just want to get it in view here, and then you can kind of just pop it. Make sure you're getting two amps blowing through it. And then just look for a cap that's overheating faster than the others. All right, so I don't look, I don't see anything down there. So let's just go up to the top here and try that. So, so yeah, I don't really, still don't really see anything. Um, but sometimes it's it's the cap that you're like, the cap that you use that is shorted, and then you're like, damn it. Still don't really see anything that's melting faster than others. So, so it's probably <laughs> going to be the front side. Put this back right here. Good chance that it's this one. It's always this one, right? It's probably one of these caps on this corner right here. So it looks like there's a little chip right here, so I'm just going to be a little careful about that. So I'll just go, let's see, I'll go this top corner right here. You know what, let me let me get this, this metal plate here I'm going to take off. Otherwise it'll be a pain in the arse. All right, so I take that little copper plate off, and then I'm just gonna cut, peel this corner right here. Hopefully, not break anything. And it doesn't look like there's any chips in this corner. It looks like it's probably just capacitors, and just capacitors are a lot easier replacing chips. It's probably one of those, yeah. But who knows? Who knows? I just know that it takes a while to get remove these stupid shields. It's not a five minute job. I mean finding the fault will be a lot easier than removing your shields. Especially when you get it all wrong, it's it's the last shield. But I, I'm, I'm still that. That's still not determined yet. Definitely don't want to mess up any of these connectors. You dip, yeah. You said it'd be, just be careful. That's all I'll say. Peel this mother like a can. Ah. Such a pain in my arse. I mean, maybe someone else has a better way of doing it, but this is my way. And it's just not that exciting, but works for me. With the least amount of risk. Okay, so. Probably one of those. Anyways. Right. Anyways, I'm just gonna take it all off, man. Screw it. I don't even know if there's VDD main down there or not. And I'll just put capped on all over it once I'm done. Okay, so let's wipe this glue away. Or this uh 
this stuff away, which is the thermal paste. And then we will hit it with some voltage again. And see if we can find this mother. So there's a bunch of capacitors right there. So just do this. Negative. Unless that was it. Oh, hold up. I see one over there. But those are not two, three. Hold on a second. Yeah, those those aren't even VDD. So you know what? I'm gonna be a little bitter if it was like part of it where it wasn't the shield. So let's do this. Oh, I think I see one that's burnt. Actually, yeah. You know what? Screw it. That was it. It's got to be. Yeah. I don't know if you can see it or not, but this puppy right here is a little bit brown. See that right there? See how that doesn't belong? That's the bad pee in the pod. I, I don't know if you can actually see that or not, but it's a little bit, you know, the other ones are a little shiny and this one's brown. If you look through the scope, like I'm looking through it, it's very, very clear that this one is broken. So, I mean, yeah, anyways. I can probably check it afterwards, but I'm, I'm like so very certain that that's that's the issue. <clears throat> Anyways, okay, so let's just let's just download it real quick. Okay, 0.335. Okay, that's fine. And then if you really want to test it, then you can actually go over to this capacitor right here that you flicked off, and then you can check it. This is a little blurry, but there should be, which it does. So okay, so we found the bad cap. Now we have to reassemble it. Well, let's just power the sucker on first and then see how it goes. Alright, so I, I put this thing back together as best as I could. Well, not the best as I could, but <laughs> it's back with a little capped on. It's not pretty, but there's no easy way to do it once you remove the shields. So, um, anyways, I'm just going to assume this works, so I'm kind of like reassembling the whole thing, kind of. Okay, um, anyways, I have to work on something else, so I just need to, I just want to power this up just to show you guys that this thing is working, even though it's really not anything special, it's just a... I guess the only thing that's kind of different is really how you remove the sh how you how you remove the shields. Okay. All right. So let's see if this thing charges or boots up. All right. There you go. All right. So I think that's done. So uh, it's gonna boot up. There was no power before. Now it's charging at 1.3 amps. And it looks like it's cycling normally. So, anyways, again, this is nothing special. This is just a VDD main short on a iPhone XR. And uh, there's no common place or anything like that. Sorry. Um, so I'm just gonna like just test everything, make sure it's well. It's actually not charging. Wheel. I think maybe the battery's cooked or something. Anyways, I'll kind of have to troubleshoot that a little bit because the battery it's not really charging right now. But anyways, it's on, so it's going to be mm, probably either battery or something like that. That's probably not great. Uh, so I will check that and fix it. But in terms of no power, I say fix no power on iPhone XR. Thanks. I just wanted to say thank you for watching our YouTube channel. We make these videos to help you guys learn how to do micro soldering um, for normal repairs. Um, I want to take this time to promote our online course here. We created an online course hosted at Udemy.com. 
Um, if you go directly to Udemy, it's 150 bucks. If you go through microsoldering.com, click on store shop, and then click on this first uh, product right here, there's a coupon code that uh, gives you $50 off of our online course. So our online course, it was created by Tom and myself. Um, it contains four and a half to five hours of online video instruction. Um, it'll teach you everything that you need to know to get started with micro soldering. So basically, we um, we start with the basics, you know, just the component level, um, how to use ZXW tools, um, what kind of how to set up your tools, what kind of tools you need, um, how to set up your hot air rework stations, um, use your micro pencil and tweezers and DC power supply and all that stuff. And then we go into actual repairs. So the four most common problems are no backlight, no touch, no charge, and loop disease. And with the newer versions of the iPhones, um, we also have a section on uh, logic board separation because with the 10 and up, uh, the logic boards come in two pieces. So we also have a section on how to separate them and put them back together. And then our last section is um, all about data recovery. So this is, it's it's four and a half hours of just good stuff just to help you get started, okay? And with the way that cell phone repair is going these days, I think it's um, essential to learn how to do micro soldering for your business. Um, if you're interested, like I said, just go to the website here, microsoldering.com, and click on uh, store shop, and then click on this right here, and you'll get $50 off. So thank you for watching our channel, and hopefully you'll enjoy the course. Thank you.